Hmm. I want to have a very unusual conversation. I want to compare 2005 with 2024. I think there is one gigantic difference that most people will miss because they were not investing in 2005. Again, there was something happened in 2005 that was the hardest in my entire career that I think nobody talks about. So Dion, this was an idea suggestion you brought. Why don't you kind of leave this off? Because I think it's a very, very important difference. Yeah, it was your live stream a couple of days ago. You were talking about the hardest time to be a landlord was 2005. And I, and I kind of associated this with with today, with what's going on this year. So in your, own, in your own words, so I don't put words in your mouth. Why was 2005 the hardest time to be a landlord? 2005 of my 25 year career was the only time I had to do move in specials. One month free, two months free, half off deposits, lowered rents. I actually had negative rents 2005. Now, why? The answer is rather comical. I remember routinely declining tenants for income, for credit, and they would turn around and call back and laugh at us because they bought a home. They were approved for a two, three, four hundred thousand dollar mortgage. And I declined their $1,200 rent. They were laughing. So 2005 was the most toxic vintage of mortgages ever. Unfortunately, in the moment, you didn't know that. All you knew was, why are all these tenants I declined buying homes? So yeah, 2005 was a rough time to be a landlord. Hmm. So the average person has a few choices, right? We, we, we can be homeless. We can stay with our parents, we could rent, or we could purchase. There might be a few other options, RV living or whatever it is, but homeless is not attractive. Huh? Living with your parents, you have to live by their rules. So you have really have renting or buying for most people. If it's so easy to buy, renting doesn't make sense. Right now, we have high interest rates, high, high home prices right? Inflation is lower, but it's not deflating yet. We're not paying less this year than we did two years ago for a house, not mm -hmm. in not market-wide. There might be a specific place where it's crashing. I don't know. Sure. But the harder it is to buy, the more demand there is for rentals. So if there's more demand for rentals, what did we see happen with rents in the last couple of years? They spiked a bunch. Might not be spiking as much this year, but Matt and I have both recently have had some tenant turnovers, right? I had a, a young couple that purchased a house. I listed the property. Uh, the, I, I did uh, what, I, what I call battle royale. I did open house viewing for two hours and, and had all 30 plus people that were interested. And the 11 applicants, 11 couples turned in applications, told them, these are the two hours. You're totally welcome to come and look. There will be other people looking at the property because there's so much demand. This is the easiest time. Mm-hmm. It's it's the polar opposite. It's not just buying real estate, owning real estate. It's never going to be easy. But this is the easiest time I've experienced being a landlord. And you guys have a, a literally 100% more time duration of being landlords. So I'm curious, 20 plus years, how is it being a landlord this year? Matt, why don't you go first? Um, it's posed new challenges. Um, I think we had a lot of carryover tenants. And so having that conversation with them of, hey, you've seen how much I've maintained the property in the last year and all the things I've fixed and addressed, et cetera, 800 bucks ain't going to cut it anymore. The mm -hmm. market is 18, but I'm still willing to work with you and make that transition, right? It's really hard. Like there's, you know, and I get it. It's like for some, they can't afford it. I'm sorry, but, you know, I've got 17 other people that can't afford, you know, that can't afford it either that need a place to stay. So I think this year, um, I think the toughest thing, I think the toughest thing this year, believe it or not, is we're finally clear of all the COVID stuff and we're yeah. finally clear of all of the subsidizing, the attitude of entitlement and like, I'm supposed to subsidize their, them, their lifestyles. Um, that's the biggest, that's been the biggest change for me is I've gotten more people completely outrageous in their requests um and in their expectations um and uh i think that you know i don't hopefully that's not a, a, a going to be an ongoing trend but i feel like it might be 
That's been the toughest thing about landlording for me has been outrageous expectations. The things that people can't do themselves, the ineptitude of so many younger tenants, um, like they're, they couldn't identify a crescent wrench. Um, and it's, it's a huge problem. They can't fix a light bulb. You know, we got an urgent request in our portal to change out a light bulb. I'm sorry. Or that the smoke, the smoke detector was beeping. We actually keep nine volts. We keep a two pack of nine volts in every property, go grab a nine volt and put it in. So I I think that, I hope that's not a trend, but I've seen the ineptitude of tenants vastly increase. Yeah. I actually think that's, what you brought up right at the beginning is is I hadn't thought about, but I think is true. We went through about a six or nine month window post, you know, subsidized rent where we had some people who got addicted to free money. Correct. Whose free money tap was turned off and they were not happy and they didn't pay. So mm-hmm. we had about a six, maybe eight month window where evictions went up because I'm certainly not going to subsidize them and you know, they had to go somewhere else. But once we got clear of that, uh, I've seen tenant turnover drop dramatically. Yeah. And, you know, again, turnover is what kills landlords long term. Now, uh, we are certainly not raising rents um, a lot, right? California does have rent control. It's 5% plus inflation. Uh, but we are raising, you know, 3 4 5% uh, at turnover. We uh, we did a Section 8 raise earlier in the year. Um so I guess my big takeaway, kind of to Dion's point, is turnover is down. And I think that has everything to do with affordability, right? In the past, certainly in 2005, kind of opening this up, I I don't know for sure, but it certainly felt like half of the people that left my units in 2005 were buying a home. Which again, as somebody who wants people to get on the property ladder, could, couldn't be a better reason to leave my rental is you buy a home. Now, a lot of them unfortunately had these teaser loans and all of that, Nagam, and it blew up. But that, you know, that's for that's a discussion for a different video. I would say today, like 2024, September 2024, I I think of one tenant who moved because they bought a home, that is down drastically from any other year uh, of being a landlord. So I think you're right. I think tenant turnover down. I think rent up. So 2024, pretty pretty good year to be a landlord, I think. Dion? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I'll take it. To, so the ease of ownership, right? If you're not broken like Matt and you don't do things like, let me take on these, I think it was 16 ERAP tenants. Yeesh. 13. Right? Mm-hmm. 13. Yep. Okay, so people who get the addiction to free money, a year's worth of rent and then don't have a penny at the end of the year because that just meant they had more money to spend. So you deal with that. Now I knew not to do that. So I haven't dealt with any of that. Mm-hmm. And I, with a smaller portfolio, I have had some tenants that were younger that I've had to kind of educate. This is what you call a landlord for. This is what you take care of yourself. This is what you email the landlord about and it will be taken care of, right? That's not an emergency this week kind of thing. So yes, it, it, the bigger your portfolio, the more of that self-educating you're going to be doing for your tenants, unless you're Zoomer and you go, I'm going to put a property manager as a shield between me and that. Uh, so I think I, I, I'm, we've quoted the decade many times. There's never been a year where people said this is an easy time to buy. Right. There's always been a reason why this, the crash is right around the corner. You shouldn't be buying. But look at if if you look at the statistics of we have low t- tenant turnover, we have high demand for rentals, rents are up year over year for the last four years. What has this housing crisis done to appreciation? Right, I've I've only done I think since twenty twenty two things. I bought two duplexes, one in twenty twenty one, one in twenty twenty three. Yet somehow my net worth tripled, even though I stopped working. It's not easy, but this is the easiest time I've seen to be a landlord, which makes me sit back and go, let me make sure I look at my portfolio. What did I learn from you guys going through the 2008 housing crash, which is why I did the one-third Section 8, one-third military, one-third working or retired, properties at least 10 miles apart, making sure each area had several economic drivers, right? I'm, I'm investing planning for a crash way worse than we're probably going to see on purpose. So I could have a bigger portfolio. I could have hunted for 
uh, thinner margin deals to have better growth potential. But no, I wanted stability. I wanted to plan for those bad things. And then it, it's like we say, we invest for cash flow and appreciation is just icing on the cake. This is a six tier wedding cake going mm -hmm. on in the appreciation from the last four years. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree more. Matt, closing thoughts and where they can find you. It's a good time to be a landlord. It's a good time to be paid to own assets. And uh, yeah, that's all I can say. And the sooner you start, the sooner you can finish. Um, but yeah, we talk about all that sort of stuff on Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube on, at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time on Thursdays. And Dan, where can they find you? They can find me right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom, where I never make wedding cake references. And now it's going to be a really bad day. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, at the end of the day, inflation's a feature, not a bug. I think we've learned the last five years, you've got to own assets if you want to get rich, because if you don't, you only go backwards. Guys, thank you very much for being here. You are amazing. Talk next week. Thanks, guys. Yeah.